Rachel Berenbaum, author of A Bend in the Stars. And today, my guest, Una Mannion, is the author of the debut novel, A Crooked Tree. I loved it. I thought it was so good, and everyone should go out and read it. I'm really excited to have you here today, Una. Tell me, what is your book about? Ooh, uh, thank you so much for having me, Rachel. Um, so my book is takes place in the summer of 1981, and it, I suppose, focuses on a family of young children. And the the catalyst event in the book is is driving home the very uh, last day of school. The children are squabbling, and the mother puts one of the children out on the road. And uh, she's a 12 year old. She's the narrator's younger sister. And I suppose that event, um, you know, the children look back at her standing there. They know, they sense something will happen. Dusk is falling and, and something does happen. And that becomes the sort of the catalyst plot event. But, it, but I think the book is more an examination of sibling relationships, uh, female friendships, you know, teenage female friendships, grief, um, and I suppose maybe America in, in the early 1980s. So what grabbed me from the beginning was this moment of parenting where, um, you know, the woman, she's recently widowed the mother and she has these five children. And so they're grieving and she's just at the end of her rope, right? Just, just get out of the car. And as a parent, I have been there. I have felt that experience. I was wondering, you know, where did you get this idea from? How did you feel that so accurately? Um, I think because it did happen um, in, in our own family. I've never done it to my kids, but definitely there are times I have wanted to do it. And I, that image was always the starting point for me. I always knew that I was going, I didn't know what would totally unfold in the novel. So I'm not very, I don't, I'm not one of those people who plots a novel before I start, but I knew I was interested in that, that rash act that ends up having consequences and even though, you know, I've read some in some of the threads, like on Goodreads, people are saying, this is, this mother is terrible. This is outrageous. I couldn't read this book. And there's a part of me that thinks, it's, you know, she's a single mother with five kids. She is at the end of her tether. And it's a very human thing to do. Um, and she's emotionally very distant from the kids. And they, they, she's flawed, but the children try to protect her, you know, so that they don't tell her what happens. Um, partly because they don't want to get in big trouble. To, they're trying to protect their mother who, who's struggling. I'm so sorry to hear that there's been some backlash or some comments against that because I feel like we need to talk about these tough parts in parenting, right? If we need to find better ways forward or to make different decisions, we can't just hide them. And that seems sort of the point of the book too. Yeah, I, I think one of the, like I think about this a lot because uh, you know I've reared three kids. My youngest is fifteen, and my eldest is twenty, and I, I have three, a uh, one in the middle there, and who just turned eighteen. And I think as as I've been parenting, I've parented in a very different way than than I grew up. I had freedom when I grew up. I had freedom to to get in trouble and get into bad experiences and to to wander into amazing experiences. And I think a little bit now, I, I feel that I had kids that opportunity. We live out in the middle of the country. They're very dependent on me to get a, to, you know, to be driven wherever they need to go. And I wonder how much fear and, you know, that I've, my perception of the universe, of not trusting the universe, that I've taken away some freedoms that they have. And I do think that I'm not the only parent starting to question that about how much we obviously we have to protect our kids. So also at the core of this novel, though, is really um, the 15 year old narrator. Right. And um, this, this sort of struggle to pull away from your family at a time when maybe your family is trying to keep you close. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's funny. I almost feel like Libby is the, op the opposite of that. So so experience, you know, there are these other forces, these external forces that, you know, her family unit is to a certain extent coming to an end and she's the one who's not ready to let it go. And so I feel like so much of this last summer um, where she's with her family is her desperation to, to, to hold on to everything and to not, not grow up and not, um, not have 
people want, you know, go into their, their next phase of life. And she's only 15 and it is too young. Um, but I think there's a lot, you know, you know, she's, she learns over the course of this summer. So there's so many emotions and different uh, paths in this book. I'm curious, what was the hardest part to write? Ooh. It's funny, uh, the, the ending wrote, came, the, I, I found the last few chapters wrote very quickly. There's sort of, um, I suppose there's a kind of climatic, you know, night of action, which, um, you know, is really, I have no idea. I suddenly was writing an action scene and I'm, it, I'm not, even now I'm kind of like, oh, it's so outside my, my uh, what I thought I would write. But after that, and the kind of the last few chapters, I actually, maybe I was so in the book at that point, I found that, that much easier. Um, and I think the hardest parts to write, um, I found the mother hard to write. And a lot of people have commented like the mother, we can't see her and we, we want to know more about her. But I think that was the part of the point was um, how to strike that balance of she, the child can't see her. She can't see her mother's pain. She can't see her mother's desire. She can't see her how young, her mother's still in her thirties. You know, she's young and she, so I think that probably um, that writing the mother took the most um, care because I definitely did not want to write like an Electra story where you have the ghost of the father and, you know, and wanting to murder the mother, you know, I didn't want the tyrannical mother. I, but, but there is a damage there. And I just thought, how do, how do you find that, that place where at the end, it's not all tidied up, but, but there is understanding and there is um, recognition of, who her mother is. So you are uh, an award-winning poet. You've written short stories, but this is your debut novel. Can you tell me how different it is to write a novel? Um, yeah, so it's funny. Um, I, I have been writing quite a bit of short stories and the poetry um, often comes out of prose for me. So I'm not someone who always starts off writing a poem, I'll, I'll, I'll probably be writing a story and the register starts to change or the language starts to heighten. And I'm like, oh, line break, or, you know, that that something's compressing. And I love the compression of the short story. I think it is, I loved the craft. I think it's a, an incredible incision into like straight into the heart of something. Um, but I think every word counts and you have to be very skilled I loved the freedom of writing a novel. Um, I loved the freedom of taking time, of looking around, of having a broader span of time, of having extra characters. Um, I loved reading, like again, about the 1980s, like reminding myself of places, you know, I was on Google Maps, walking streets, you know, that I knew from childhood, but, you know, I was like there walking on street view. Um, and I love, and I think in a story, like there are times you research a story, but it doesn't have that kind of expanse. So tell me, do you have any advice or words of wisdom for new writers? Well, I love, I always, um, I do think that um, the that idea of just write, I sound like a Nike ad or something like just do it, but I do think that part of the process is over yourself sometimes and just writing and I, I work with someone I teach and there's um, another man I teach with and I've heard I heard him one day telling the students give me your ugly writing and I was like I loved that line because what he meant was like stop stop being precious about it and write because then you have something to work with on the page and I do think um, for for a lot of writers that's the obstacle that writing got mystified somewhere along the line it became this magic thing rather than just the thing that you should sit down and tackle and just do. Una, thank you so much for joining me all the way from Ireland. I love the book. I hope everybody will go out and buy a copy. May you sell many, many books.